Luna Maurer is the head of a, or is, is one of the founders of a wonderful studio called Moniker in Amsterdam. Um, and uh, they're one of my favorite studios. I'm so thrilled that she could be with us today. Google Design is made up not just of designers, but of engineers. And it's this blended nature of our team that we feel like really makes the work that we do special. Um, because it's not just about what designers can, can kind of give to code, but also what code can give back to designers. Um, and I think that Luna's work really engages these questions head on and fully. Um, and, it, and it does it in a way that's not specifically digital or specifically analog, but sort of mediating between the two, drawing from science, from sort of algorithms and different ways of thinking about software, as well as artistic ideas from conceptual and performance art. Um, and I think in doing that, she makes the programmatic uh, legible, playful, and very, very human. So we're thrilled to have her. Please welcome Luna Maurer. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Rob, first of all, for the invitation and also for the really nice introduction. Um, I'm very excited to be here and I'm also very excited to kick off the event. So uh, let's hope something great will come out. Um, I uh, again introduce very quickly our studio. Um, we are Moniker, and I could be uh, this. Standing here could be also Jonathan Paki, which is to the left, uh, Ruhl Wouter is my other partner. And we are could call Interactive Design Studio, based in Amsterdam. And we are a very small team of uh, five people. We have two employees. And uh, well, our interests are lie in technology and how people use technology every day. So uh, you could say the social effects of technology as well. So we love the machine, and we're interested in the quality of the machine and the characteristics of it, the fluidity. Um, yeah. And uh, on the other hand, we're interested in people and the characteristics of people and the quality of people, and in which way also that differs, differs from the machine. So I will elaborate uh, in my talk on the dialogue between those two. And I start a little bit dry but you will get uh, nice, more playful examples later, uh, with a manifesto that we wrote uh, in 2008. And we called it Conditional Design Manifesto because we um, felt somehow with what the work we were doing that it didn't really fit into any category. We didn't feel like being web designers, filmmakers, or we would uh, always move in between those disciplines. And we thought we have to describe what the method, the way we work. So we came up with the term uh, conditional design that has been also uh, used by other people in the meantime, which is nice. And um, I very briefly explain you what this manifesto is about. So mainly the first uh, aspect is that we state uh, we're interested in processes. So we're interested in the fact to make things that evolve, that change, that grow, instead of making static uh, products, because we think it doesn't really fit these days anymore in this complex environment we live in. So uh, if you want to make a process, or if you want to design a process, if you're interested in it, you have to design an environment or a framework in which the process can take place. And that you have to, uh, for that, you have to come up with rules or conditions in, um, to, yeah, to design uh, the framework. So this is uh, basically where we um, came up also with the term. And the third aspect is the input. If you want to, um, uh, if you have this framework, uh, then it needs to be fueled with some kind of input. And we're interested in the dirty world, you could say, in the outside, in people, in their behavior, rather than from within the clean environment of the computer. So this is basically the input, the environment with conditions uh, generates the process. Th that's uh, after writing uh, um, this text, which is also good to write it down in order to take a distance from it later, because we also don't agree on all aspects of the manifesto anymore. And uh, so you can, uh, it's just a good uh, point of discussion, you say. And, but after that, we continue to meet every Tuesday night in my kitchen 
and we, would th we thought we have to practice what we preach. And we came up with making these small uh, workshops t lasting about three hours, and uh, we would end up making a lot of rule-based drawings. And these rule-based drawings is in fact uh, like people executing a code. So um, one person, we did it every week, one person had to uh, think of the concept of the code or the, the rule set and then we would just do it. So i show you um, uh, an example. So uh, we would always sit exactly at the same spot. F we were four people, sit at the same spot on the table, having every week the same color pen. I was always had blue, Jonathan had red, and so forth. So, and then we only changed the rules. And in this case, I don't explain you them really d in depth, but it's called hatching, and the angle of your line you were allowed to draw had to do with the angle you were assigned to. And um, so you would start drawing without knowing what would come out. And that is the whole idea about what you know about generative design as well. But um, so uh, the nice thing is that, yeah, you didn't know, except the person that thought of the rules had some kind of idea, but ideally also you would get surprised by the outcome because of the, um, the difference is here that people executing it. So the difference between this algorithmic drawing and people executing it, that you have this little bit of freedom. And you use that little bit of freedom in order to bend it in order to your own satisfaction. You get excited about ha using a bigger space or you want to overcome something else of the other person. So this is the whole uh, play. So you actually playing and not winning or losing, but you dependent on each other and you're playing with each other in order to make something bigger. And these dynamics in these uh, workshops, they were triggering us to make more and more. And i show you one other, ah oh yeah, this is, uh, for example, the result. And what is quite, um, uh, we found out that it's really important if you want to have people uh, uh, being involved in a process to get a reward. So, and ideally, you see right away what the, uh, what your own contribution does to it. So in this case, you see right, uh, the, the, you'd say the, the poster is the reward. And yeah, so, um, and ideally you see uh, it's a visualization also of the process. So you recognize the mistakes or uh, the, uh, the stories that we've been telling each other while doing it at certain spots. So it's maybe more for yourself. This is another, ex another example, we call it a kaleidoscope. And it's, uh, you have one leader and three followers, and every uh, 30 seconds, the next person takes over the lead. So it is something which is quite difficult uh, to do because uh, you have to point mirror the leader. And uh, yeah, obviously you make very quickly mistakes. And uh, then you have already made a mistake, but you have to continue on it. And then um, you are sort of up. And uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this uh, workshop deals a lot with the human imperfection, you could say, where you uh, sort of visualize that. And these mistakes, they are also always these force fields in the image later on. Um, uh, yeah, this is where your eyes uh, revolve around. Where does it go wrong? So uh, we found out that there are these three aspects of uh, fun, you could say. The, uh, we were playing with this human imperfection. We were playing with the idea of strategies. Uh, you need the other person in order to do something and uh, storytelling. So uh, here you see, you can look for the wrong spots. Um, then we made a book because we got a lot of res uh, response and uh, yeah, the uh, manifesto was also translated into diff different languages and it was also very help. We publish all those uh, workshops on the website conditionaldesign.org. And uh, so, and we thought uh, it was interesting for everybody that is interested in having less control over the outcome to be training this thinking. 
So, uh, yeah, you have 10 different workshops in this book, and you have actually also in your reader a couple of workshops and with the rules uh, in it, so you can try it out uh, yourself. And also the idea was that you, you change it the way you, are, yeah, you like it. So I very quickly, I don't talk long about that. By the way, you can uh, uh, buy it. It's sold out, but you can buy it uh, secondhand on via, via Amazon. It's only very expensive now, but yeah. <laughs> that's a small minor detail. Um, yeah, so I would like to, uh, I put that slide in there because this is quite something which is uh, dear to us. Sometimes the projects we do a lot of play, playful and um, fun and people laugh, but we uh, take it really serious. And I think it's only then it's becoming interesting if you are set in such a framework and you really seriously engage within it. Only then uh, this freedom and only then you get, um, you feel the satisfaction of the opening of the, of the space where the limitation, where you can, uh, yeah, ah, it's <laughs> I don't explain it well, but uh, it's really important to, um, uh, yeah, take it serious. Otherwise, it's not interesting, I think, if you just do it for five minutes and then, uh, you know, you walk further or something. Well, uh, this is the uh, attic of our studio. We have a studio in the center of Amsterdam in an old school building, really nice uh, with high ceilings, and this is um, above that, the attic. Uh, and we decided to um, continue the workshops during our work time in Thursday afternoons. And we even stopped teaching because of that, because we needed to find more time to experiment next to our daily works. And uh, we also wanted to involve more digital components on dynamic input, not only the uh, pen. So in this case, uh, we set up like projector lamps and so forth, and in this case, we even used clay. And I show you one small example where uh, we hooked uh, the machine to a projector and project down the desktop, basically, on a sheet of paper. So uh, in this case, um, Jonathan and me playing together, he, you see his, uh, he's on Photoshop. Uh, his Photoshop canvas is projected down on, on the sheet. And he, with his selection tool in Photoshop, he is making these white spaces live, because he sees me uh, drawing. And uh, I, with my line, I bounce within these changing white spaces that he's opening constantly to me. So um, you have basically a physical player and a digital player simultaneously. And uh, I really like this combination. It's really weird to, to draw abo uh, above with your real pen above boundaries, which are not really there or constantly change because they're digital. It's really a funny, nice uh, merge of the two um, media. Yeah, and there's coming, I think, somewhere a mistake I made, but it doesn't matter. In fact, it was really easy. <laughs> you know, same angle in, same angle out. So, uh, yeah. And we also, uh, uh, you know, these small exercises we make, uh, we apply them so also sometimes for the outside world. And this is an example where we use, um, we were asked to make a contribution for the Amsterdam Design Prize, uh, not Design Prize, Art Prize called AFK. And um, so uh, we decided to draw portraits of the uh, nominees of the prize. And we draw the portraits according to certain rules uh, with the letters A, F, K. And I'll show you this film because we here we recorded our voices and then you hear a little bit how the dynamics is of such a situation. And you must imagine we project down the, f the heads, the faces of the uh, nominees. If you want to start a complete new line, for example, here, yeah. then you first have to complete the shade. shade. But, if you, but you can always continue in any finished shape. Yeah, that I understand. So I have to continue on the shape then. Yeah. Um, okay, so I do the A. Do it on the nose. Yes, that's 
what I wanted to this do. This guy has a very geometric nose, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so I can start the letter here. I can say yeah, this yeah. is the yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's not this hand? No, it's more this, going down from the nose. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an important, it's an important uh, feature. Yeah. Important feature. The chin line, for example, you know? What are you yeah. intending to do with this line? An A or an F. F or an F. Okay. But then it means that, for example, this F is open for my new letters. Yeah. Because this is on the A. Yeah, and the A is also open. It's also mm -hmm. opened up. Mm -hmm. So you can... Yeah, now this one is okay, not... But so I want to make an F. Sure. You can do it. Do it, Luna. Yeah. Do it. You make it. You can come up with a plan, like your own little conditional rule that you apply. Wow. So can I do an A? Which follows this like a lip line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you're black on blue, that works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it becomes you know, a really long F. But then you have to put the line here or too. Or yeah. super tiny K then somehow. No? Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, you still have to, you have to make R an F or an A, a okay. or a K. I like this sort of little F edges. They're really sort of signatory. Yeah, cool. do, do you want to continue here? Sure. And you can make a nice F here. Mm -hmm. But isn't that really... Part of the K? No, but this uh, this has yeah, no. Yeah. Well, you can do this. Mark this lip. I no, was all the I want to make. You can make new, eh? You can yeah, start. Yeah, but like I want. I like it better to connect things. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> like I'll tell you, when it's finished, <laughs> that will be the most pretty line in the whole thing. Okay. So, yeah. I like the complexity mm -hmm. of how they are connected. But you really see AFK every now and then. I have a plan. You have a plan? Hey, can you maybe finish here something because it's really. I'm sorry. This is really annoying. There's no line there, though. This is, I could make an A right here. Yeah. yeah. Is it possible that I'm every time getting the same face? No. I always forget that you can start completely new once you finish a letter. I'm just happy with drawing another one. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, is that nice there? Is that a line? Does it actually exist? There's a line here. Now, is this already also an unfinished one or what? No, it's a K. Mm -hmm. That's a K. So you can start there. I think it's also nice, this white thing, you know, the thickness of the line sort of happening along. Mm -hmm. Make a little K here still. What is another line too? One line can only be part no, of two letters. True. That line is already trying to be something, yeah? I don't know, what is this? This that, is That part line of is connected to that black line, so either that becomes an A, yeah. 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 or okay. uh, what has to become an A or F. The rule is, it's finished when Somebody has to go the home. person who thought it up says that it's finished. So, um, the... Um, uh, I live now this whole um, world of this physical, um, the you could say, um, protected environment of the workshop setting to the public space. Um, we have been working on a series of works uh, called Fungo series, and now, in fact, uh, the public is the ones that draw or that make something. And as I said, it's uh, in the museum. Uh, it originated in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Amsterdam. Um, it was an exhibition about digital media. And um, in fact, you could say, is a physical algorithmic work. And um, people get a sticker sheet and they're asked to glue the stickers on the, sh uh, on the floor. And that um, is, has been very popular because in Musea you never allowed to do anything or to touch anything. So finally you can glue stickers on the whole floor of the museum. So it was really always everybody wanted to do that. And um, uh, so you get a sheet. This is an example with only four rectangles. And uh, the thing is that with only four rectangles you hardly can do anything, right? So you have to see uh, how do you blend in with the whole, with the crowd, and what can you do together then? So uh, the, rule, the only rule is that you cannot um, start sticking anywhere. You have to stick close to an, an existing sticker. So it slowly emerges from one place to the rest of the museum. And this is an example of um, how it looked after three months. And... Um, it, uh, it was quite nice to see that um, it spread as quickly as possible through all the corridors. So first, uh, as much as space is covered, like making branches, and there were lots of corridors. It was a previous uh, spot of the uh, State Lake Museum where they were located. And uh, so that was apparently uh, something which uh, happened 
by the collective mind. And um, yeah, I see it also a bit like traffic, making these uh, streets and yeah and so forth. And uh, it's very interesting that um, people always try to find some sense, try to make an action that is in a way relates to already, of course, to the existing stickers. So it's really hard also to make an arbitrary random action because you have to, um, yeah, you have to relate it. Even though if you don't go with the already starting uh, path or, or story, you sort of um, do you have to relate to it, you, you glue it in a different way, and then it's also, you know, uh, so it's not possible to make something really arbitrary, I think. So there's always this uh, very visible, this uh, collective or like a human story or human, like s something that you can understand, something that makes sense. So you see these tiny stories oscillating between the um, abstract and the figurative. And if you are a bigger group, of course, you have much more control. So in this case, uh, yeah, once you make your names. And you have uh, people, of course, that again want to hack the system, which is quite nice. Uh, then if you tear it apart, the sticker, you again have more power to do something. And so we made another, uh, we made uh, several versions where also we use other shapes and colors and rules. And in this case, here we use two circles and two lines. And uh, it was in a museum in uh, Gijón in Spain. And um, the rules this time were that you had to connect these stickers and no open um, line ends were allowed. So uh, you had to connect them to a line or to another circle. And I imagined really a big variety of um, images and this uh, is uh, what came out and it's quite amazing this red carpet spreading all over the floor and it was also another another floor it was completely covered but what struck me also was the fact that uh, people would make a uh, fact uh, nodes and edges visualization if you see circles and line you right away make nodes and edges because within the possibilities you also could make completely different things um, yeah, so uh, that's how that looked. Um, this, in this example, you, would, you didn't know exactly what would come out, what would be the bigger picture. But we also uh, tried and experimented with the idea of doing something where you have a little bit of an idea what would come out. In this case, uh, letter shapes, because everybody has an idea about how a letter looks. And um, so the A, the B, and the C. Um, yeah, we call it uh, this series uh, the growing pains of collaborative type. So I uh, quickly explain you how it works. It was in uh, Sao Paulo in uh, a workshop that we started. Oh, yeah, I like that. So everybody of the participants, they got uh, stickers a set of stickers and they had to move around in the circles and to a certain beat or to a certain uh, impulse and then move to the next one and they could add uh, one sticker and replace another sticker. So that means it grows the letter but in the same time it also can morph, it can change its shape. And uh, at the beginning you obviously try to make the most simple construction of uh, the letter shape but due to the uh, confined space, and because you have to continue, because you have many more stickers, um, you have to come up with an idea how to make it bigger. Do I prolong it in what way, or with how to make it wider, and so forth. So um, there is how do you deal with these dilemmas, right? And um, this is uh, the result of it. So you can. Um, put the volume up. Yeah.
um, we um, made some other experiments like that, and we thought, hey, why don't we do it also online? Um, so we, uh, we were asked to make a monument, design a monument in the city of Amsterdam at the central square, at the Dam Square. And um, it is related to a reset thing, the Second World War. There should come a name memorial. And um, so we thought we do make the same collaborative type experiment in order to design the um, 31 names of the victims. And you can, uh, we started it recently, and you can see it uh, or join in on placeastone.nl. And I quickly uh, show you how it works there. So you have an introduction to understand the purpose of the event. Um, these horrible images are in the Netherlands quite famous, uh, where lots of people were killed. And um, then you're thrown into the um, website. And then you enter the one of the victims, one of the names. And uh, do I have to be Oh, yeah. Um, so you see first an animation of how the last 50 stones are placed. And then. Uh, your you want to place a stone, and to your mouse cursor a stone is attached, and you can place it somewhere. If you're happy, you go to the next step, and then you also here are able to replace one of the stones. And that is also quite important, again, because of the fact that it changes slowly, but also uh, it is a social control if pe people are making really strange things, there are the others that can correct it as well. So we so far did not need to um, invol uh, involve or interfere. Um, and then you can go to another name and um, you have the possibility only placing one stone at each name. So um, this is a Right at the beginning, it's not uh, the latest uh, version right now, um, but I like to see uh, the, the fight going on in the E. It starts with a big letter E, and then somebody makes it to a small letter E, and then slowly it's becoming a big letter E again, and then in the end it's becoming a small letter E as again. So this is the speed also what we found out for these films where you want to where you can follow the certain individual actions of others, you know, seeing a stone is placed and then somebody else takes it away again, puts it somewhere else. And we hope that, or we believe that it runs until February, uh, that many more thousands of people will add stones and therefore the letters grow and become thicker and more refined. And the more stones are added, the more the stones shrink in size. So you can ma make a more refined um, resolution of the letter shapes. And then it will be uh, carved in stone, the product, the result, and will be placed in the floor in the center of Amsterdam. You get these name plates. So you can find back your own stone. This is. And um, well, we realized that um, what you know all very well. The most difficult thing is to design the right tools and to find the right balance between the freedom and the limitations. If you limit people too much, you, um, they feel like a robot. It's not interesting for you because you cannot express yourself enough. If you open it too much, it's also not so interesting. It's also a bit boring, you know? So um, to find here the right balance is the difficult thing. And also, the more you express yourself, you feel more as an author of the thing. And that is what you want. You want people to claim it and to feel being an author of what they contribute to and what they do. And this is an example of uh, a work where this, I think, is addressed quite in a quite nice way. Um, this is a project for, again, in the Museum for Contemporary Art in Amsterdam. It's an in installation that has been there for nine months. Last, it ended last year. And we wanted to make a collaborative uh, uh, animation movie. 
and um, where people had to draw those frames of the film. And uh, if you enter the space, it's called Your Line or Mine. Um, if you enter the space, you can um, take a sheet of paper, draw on it, scan it. There is a scanner integrated in the, in the table, put it in the slit, and then um, your frame, your drawing is automatically part of the film that is projected on the wall in the museum. Um, so, yeah, uh, how to make an animation movie with, um, because every slide has to be just a little bit different, not slide, every frame a little bit different in order to have a movement. And we came up with the idea to make a skeleton of dots and a structure, what to do with the dots on, uh, to preprint these papers. And uh, in this case, it says uh, draw a perfect circle through both dots. So if the dots have a different spot, then you get a growing circle. So, uh, but we also have very simple uh, <laughs> instructions where that, for example, tra uh, draw a line as straight as possible through connect to connect both dots. And then this one is more um, about uh, your handwriting and the differences between the way of drawing. Do drawing very quickly, sloppy, or uh, your, how your pen moves. And, um, but we also have more complex uh, instructions where you have more uh, freedom to interpret it or to draw it your own way. Um, so I will uh, play you the first that starts a bit, uh, the first film that starts a little bit simple and then gets more complex. So if you um, ask people to draw a horizontal, a diagonal line, this is what you get. The people try to look for the border within that it's still sort of um, according to the instruction, but still you do it your way. So uh, that we found out is a very prominent uh, thing. 
And um, so you could see it also as a dialogue. They answering us and saying, hey, listen, I'm here the author, not you. So uh, it is um, yeah, this dialogue between us and them answering to the instructions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the question is here also, once you are um, confronted with this installation, how much do you want to blend in to make a bigger thing, or how much do you want to stand out? And uh, yeah. And um, yeah, we also um, found out that uh, people really uh, love doing it. We got lots of uh, response on it and because the fact that you have the pen and draw something in the museum on a sheet of paper is really something people like to do a lot. So uh, this I, um, is a very short fragment from the second film that uh, where the moves, uh, the, the dots move slowly, what I explained to you at the first place. This is a more mechanical uh, way of animating the um, film. And uh, another example is the where we program the dots. So this is like one big shot through the whole uh, film where the dots move, only the instructions change. And you can look at it uh, on yourline.mine.com to see the three, uh, the whole movies. And um, yeah, this is an interface for the um, editing it because we got so many frames, many more. We hope to fi finish all three films, and we got 15 uh, times as much than we expected. And then we had to pick certain frames out. That was really lots of work and the next time we will outsource it somehow. Um, but uh, yeah, it was also necessary because uh, we got a lot of <laughs> messages. <laughs> like uh, marriage proposals, for example. How cool is it to have a marriage proposal in a film in the museum running on the wall? So uh, it was there for a while until we said, okay, now you have to go. And uh, yeah, or very interesting other statements were there. So I just, uh, yeah, it works. The, 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 the system really worked very well to have people do stuff. And we also had uh, the hackers <laughs> so th that understand the barcode. There needs to be the barcode that is interpreted and then puts the frame on the right spot in the, in the film. That's why it doesn't matter at what table you scan what. Uh, so, and then they know how to make a blue frame in the yellow film. So, uh, uh, yeah, that is the website uh, where you can uh, see the films. And then there's one last uh, project I would like to show, because this one is also maybe the most popular of the ones that I'm presenting today. Uh, it's called do not touch .org. Um, It is a video clip. And we really like to do video clips because the format of the video clip is everybody understands and you can make strange experiments and nobody asks any question. They just do it because it's a video clip. Uh, instead of making something related to art, then it's really like uh, sort of rather scary. And um, so the format really suits us. And um, this one, yeah, there have been more than four million um, participants and uh, it is, it's also really easy to contribute because as soon as you go to the website, you are part of it. Your pure digital presence is enough because your mouse pointer gets recorded. So uh, you see a set of instructions and you just follow and you see in this uh, film always the latest oh, in the, on the website when you go there. Uh, the latest 1,000 uh, participants, and it's constantly changing and updating. And uh, this project was an homage to the disappearing uh, mouse pointer. We think that's a very pity. <laughs> so uh, we celebrate the mouse pointer uh, because of the touch interface, right? So soon there won't be any mouse pointer anymore. And uh, we hope that it is will be uh, running until uh, the mouse pointer is still there. 
So um, I will run you the clip so you have an idea. The internet has decided that the smiley has a nose, in case you didn't <laughs> notice. <laughs> uh, well, of course, it's really a super uh, sensation to feel uh, that you're all together out there by the fact of seeing all those mou mouse pointers together. And, but also, what we really uh, surprised that we didn't really design was the swarm effect by all those people moving together. That is a really great... Uh, sensation or great uh, effect that we are also surprised by. And that is also very much why we uh, like to work on this collaborative online uh, works, because if a lot of people uh, join together, you never know what, come out, what comes out and you obviously cannot think, it, think of it. So um, this is uh, our interest and um, that was my presentation. Thank you very much.